and this is a net-based course. Uh, and we have uh, nine so-called work packages that is uh, uh, each co corresponding to about two weeks of studies. And we have two course meetings in, in real life or off screen as they say. Um, the typical student on this course is someone who is uh, not directly connected to the university. It's a person who is uh, about to end his uh, education or maybe already has started to work in, in the working life. Uh, and um, they have some biology, but usually they have more experience in, in, in other topics. It, it varies quite a lot, actually. And that's uh, quite interesting in itself. Uh, uh, in this course, well, these piece, people will be working with decision making. And uh, we have two elements uh, in this course, which is uh, clearly related to the topic here today. Uh, they all the first one is about triage, uh, which is a rather short part of the course, and the other part is about evidence-based methods, uh, which is a, a quite heavy part of the course. And uh, both these uh, uh, types of um, methods are uh, related or comes from, uh, from medicine, and they have been transformed to conservation biology. So triage is... is um, actually sort of method that you described uh, here to start with. Um, uh, a method to um, sort. This is, is a, an emer emergency ward and in the emergency ward you need to sort out uh, which, uh, uh, which um, uh, persons to, to prior prioritize which to take first and, and there is always a shortage of time or a shortage of doctors or, or resources. So you have to, with um, the available resources, decide what to, to uh, prioritize. Uh, and we are basing this uh, part of the course on a paper by Baudrill et al, which is named, is, uh, the title is, is Conservation Triage Triage is a uh, French word. Uh, uh, is conservation triage just smart decision making? Uh, and this is a rather short and rather easy to read paper. And the method which is uh, described is uh, how to uh, use uh, this method, method for conservation decision making. So the first step is to identify biodiversity assets and their value. Uh, the second step is to assess biodiversity benefit uh, of actions. The third is to assess probability of success. And the fourth to calculate costs for alternative actions. And based on the results of these assessments, you set up a cost efficient action plan based on, on the criteria. And, and it looks like this. So this is a method that we present and the real uh, the reason that we do this is that we will want to start a discussion among the students. Uh, because many students, they, they are very engaged and they think that they can do everything. But they must understand that they can't do everything. They have to uh, learn how to prioritize. And that is uh, also what they have to have in mind during the rest of the, the course. Uh, technically, we do this on a meeting which is net-based. Uh, so the students have to read the paper in before, and then uh, they are, can uh, criticize and comment the method at, at the meeting, and they also supposed to discuss their own experience of these sort of situations, if they have any. This usually creates a lot of discussions, and the people have quite a lot of different opinions about this. But it's a good starting point for the course. Uh, this is very early in the course. Uh, then we have the evidence-based uh, project. Uh, evidence-based evalu evaluation is a method also uh, coming from medicine, uh, where you uh, make sort of a meta-analysis of uh, available scientific data in order to find the best methods for um, uh, helping, or, yeah, helping the, the patients. 
so this has uh, quite a lot of uh, important elements that we want to learn our students uh, because most of them are rather practical oriented and they have not very much experience in science. Uh, we want them to learn how to evaluate scientific data uh, and make, use this for decision making. So uh, in this project, project they learn how to formulate problem, they learn how to retrieve uh, scientific information from databases, uh, they are reading scientific literature, they are setting up criterion evaluation uh, and they are evaluating information from various sources. Uh, they are presenting uh, the scientific data and they also uh, in the process see that there is a lot of gaps of knowledge and uh, uh, there is also a lot of discussion about conservation issues and how to make decisions in this project. So uh, the project is rather focused on certain methods uh, that they have to, to learn and apply. So they have to define a question and they do that, that in a very structured way which we have uh, quite uh, detailed information how to do. But they should search literature from different sources and they should also document how they have done this search so that it's possible to do this search uh, in five years or ten years and see if the results will change. So this ends up in, in uh, uh, product and product which is a final report uh, but uh, the process is uh, going through most parts of the course so we start in the second work package with an introduction to the methods we continue with the tentative choice of subjects so each student has to uh, choose a so subject and usually they choose a subject which is uh, of their heart which is something that they are very interested in which means that we get a lot of different uh, studies uh, with different subjects. And then they make the first search protocol uh, and the search protocols are commented by other students and then they start to do the search and then they uh, make a preliminary analysis uh, <coughs> and present it as a PowerPoint uh, presentation at the second course meeting which is uh, in real life. Uh, well, they're also supposed to have contact with personal with practical experience on the subject. But uh, to be honest, in uh, both cases they, they don't have time to do that because they are always very stressed at the uh, last parts of the course. But this is something that probably is more important that we have uh, considered to be. Then there is a final report which is a written report. And, and the reports are usually quite good. Uh, some students have problems because they don't read English that well or they may try and they may try to find Swedish sources uh, which we push them not to do only. Uh, some try to find sources which are in the grey literature but we try to fast force them not to do that uh, but to, to find uh, scientific um, uh, sources. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the range of, of evidence-based projects that were uh, undertaken the last year. So you can see that's a lot of different topics and some of them are quite uh, burning questions. So what is the experience of the students? Uh, I think uh, the experience seems to ver be very positive if you look at the, the eva course eva evaluations after the, the course. Uh, some Students think it is a rather hard, tough job to do this, but uh, uh, most think that it's a good exercise. And uh, as the students have different projects and they present them together, you get a very good and broad range of vari vari the variation of problems that occur in this subject. Um, finally, can, I can say also that that uh, we usually get quite good gra gradation from the students for, for the project and uh, also that uh, in each year there are students that say that they have got a new position, 
or they have got a job because of they have taken uh, this uh, very course. Uh, I should also mention that I'm not the only one teaching on the course. It's also Lars Pettersson, uh, who is uh, actually uh, responsible for the uh, evidence-based project studies. Okay, thank you. Thank you.